Hey, Jackie Squad, Jack here. I'm so sorry about it, like uh, obviously the video and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm slacking <laughs> off. Okay, look, I'm in Malaysia. That's let's not talk about that, shall we? As you may know, a little while ago, oh well, six days ago, I came back from China. Uh, straight up arriving back, China is an amazing country to visit. But how can you visit when there are so many places, so many places to explore, so many opportunities to get? Well, my name is Jack, I've been to China and this is the Winter Edition. For my tips and tricks for anyone visiting China anytime soon. So, let's get straight into it. Okay, so, uh, right off the bat, we have to look at your passport, visa requirements, and your flight itinerary. Don't worry that I'm going to go one by one, okay? So let's start off with visas. So from as of December 1st, 2023 to November 30th, 2024, there is no touch. And to catch. Travelers from France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Spain, and Malaysia, and, and, and apparently Singapore, they can enjoy a 15-day visa-free entry to China for you know tourism business visiting friends and relatives in china now remember only from december 1st 2023 to november 30th 2024 from the start of this on the 2023 december to the end of november in 2024 that is when it's going to end however china as states here um Invited by student three, China's visa free policy allows national national <coughs> <laughs> of seven countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, to travel to China for a stage range from 24 hours to 180 days without obtaining a visa requirement. To, without obtaining a visa, if certain requirements are met. Yes, that is true. So if you do meet the requirements to go to China, if you're from the US, the UK, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, if you do meet certain requirements that China has set, then no, you will not need a visa, okay? But only if you're in China for 24 hours to 180 days. Convert that as a I don't know what happens. Second thing, flight itinerary. Always know your itinerary. Okay, don't miss the damn flight. Especially at Chinese airports where they are huge, they're massive. Yeah, you need to keep an eye out for it, definitely. The way you can do it is by looking at your boarding pass or looking at your flight board or whatever it is. And now, it also depends on which airline you're taking um, as well. But I'll get to Anywho, um, yeah. Always keep up to date with your flight details. <laughs> Definitely. Like in my case, I'm in China Southern, and I'm a Dallas in tour, so that's why I'm not gonna get into that. Um, yeah, your passport, obviously, you not working it. You need to be at least six months in advance before you can travel. This applies to each and every single country. So, from visas to passports to flight itineraries, why else is that? You say no? Not even close for winter. So, the next thing is if you're traveling to China in the winter where it's ridiculously cold, like from when I went to China, it was like what? Negative 15, negative 20 ish? Um, definitely some heavy winter clothing is requirement. Um, you know, it's either it's your long john, um, your normal clothing, not something like this. Um, but not something like this. I'm basically going to the hotel where you can sleep, but if you're going out, say, going outside, then yeah, your shirt needs to be a lot more heavy than this. Um, and also a warm jacket, so that'd be about three, three layers. Now that, now that's normal. Um, pants, obviously long john and just like, just uh, winter that pants. And uh, I, I guess except a winter type windproof. The windproof. Um, as well, some winter shoes. Really, really, a thing you would wear is to know you go to a country that's ridiculously cold. Like it goes straight into the negative stuff. Yes, you will need it <laughs> because yeah, 
and oh and now sticking with uh, winter clothing slippers and the hotels do provide them obviously however you may need to get your own like in my case I got some of my own as well this is to ensure that you know you won't get your feet dirty while you're in the hotel room or, the, or yeah you're not, while you're not in the hotel room not in the hotel room, in the hotel room what am I talking about so definitely if you want bring a whole lot of slippers in your luggage if you don't want to that's fine you can use the ones that, are, that your local hotel provides which brings on to my next point now this, now this only in case you change your hotels every single day um uh, how would I explain this Let's see ah. if you're in a tour be prepared to change hotels every single damn day say if you're like in my case, I'll run Dalian first, and then I went to Shenyang, in Jili, and then to Harbin. Um, I kept changing hotels every single night, except for the last two days. Well, two nights. So from there, um, yeah, it basically happened. So be prepared if you want to change hotels. Don't pack a lot of stuff. Because the more you pack, the more, the more harder it is to pack and you have to change hotels every single day my mom. so always be prepared for that as well now let's move on to something a bit a bit more serious sorry now this is uh, a requirement <laughs> this this right here is my iPhone 11 now that is a requirement okay now, obviously, if you don't want it to run out of battery by in China and let's say not in hotel, you can use what's called a power bank. However, there is a limit. You can't go um, above 20,000 yeah, 20, mAh, whatever that means. It has to be below that. Otherwise, you cannot bring it to China. Um, China's immigration is strict as hell, so be prepared. And also grab. <coughs> um, your you know, portable charger register. I don't really know how to explain it. Ooh, actually, give me a sec. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is a perfect example. <laughs> this, I think, is called an adapter. I'm not wrong. Um, bring one that you can just plug in at the Chinese hotel room and you know, just charge the phone, your power bank, you should drop in the shoes because I've done many tech and stuff. <coughs> yeah. So, always remember a power bank, <coughs> an international adapter, a charger is required, okay? I'm not making this up. Um, yeah, moving away from that. And we just um, sticking with these things, technology and stuff. Um, this is why you need to use rope mean data. If you're from another country and you want to, you know, say, put up your Instagram, your YouTube, your Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever, whatever you use to keep on social media, you need to get a roaming data, you need to get a phone card or what I call roaming data from another country. So what, what, I, what I mean is that the roaming data that you use is not in is not China's. It's actually let's say the United States, for example, or Singapore or Malaysia. You're using the, their data from their country while in China. So they won't know anything and you won't get blocked. However, if you use China's Wi-Fi, then yes, you will need a VPN to bypass <coughs> their censorship and how they actually block stuff. It, it's a lot more confusing than it is. But to be honest, if you, want, if you don't want to get blocked, just use from your data, yeah. <laughs> like I do. But in my case, I use from data from Benja. So, yeah. <laughs> so, now, what happens if your skin gets really dry? It's just so itchy. This ventilation comes in. It is a huge requirement, okay? 
to get lotion in. Please do. For the God's sake of my life, please bring lotion, okay? So that your skin will be moist, will, be, will not be dry, will not be itchy, will be just right. Alright, now we got that stuff out of the way. Um, it, especially in the winter season, in, especially in China, you can get quite sick. Medication. Your medication, your Panadol. Um, bring anything really that can make you feel a lot better. Please do bring it to China, but don't bring a lot of it because that might get suspicious and stuff. But all your medications that you need, please do bring it as well, just in case you get sick. And this, this water bottle right here, yeah, that's a requirement as well. Bring as many as you can. Uh, preferably the plastic one, so you can just uh, refill it over and over again, or you can drink one for your bag, for your bag bin or something. So much easier. So let's say that um, you got into the, you got into the incident, you have just grand, and you're in that, you're in your hospital, and you don't have travel insurance. Well, then you're screwed. <laughs> you're absolutely screwed. <laughs> Which brings us to my next point. You guys already know why this travel insurance. You have please do buy this if you're traveling to a foreign country. You know, just in case anything goes. Hey, while and yourself, like you're falling down, getting sick, the quarantine at a hotel, or the hotel or hospital for five days, yeah, then yeah, you will need it because yeah, it is a requirement. But why not? But why not about quarantine at a hotel, hospital for five days? I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. But a travel insurance, yeah, if it goes bad, then obviously you should cover for it, such as you get stuck in the hospital or something. Thing, welcome to China. Yeah, so with that, um, that's one perfect reason. Ah, when I was coming back to Malaysia, obviously this wasn't before me because I was sick as hell. Um, when we came, when I was at immigration control, um, but I wanted to transfer from domestic to international at Guangzhou. Uh, yeah. I had to not cough <laughs> because once they detect and they know, you, like the board officials, um, know your sick and stuff, they will um, quarantine you at a hospital for five days, and you travel and just feeling really that nothing can really do about it. Do about it. It is a government thing. Um, obviously, I barely, I barely survived. I was very unwell at that time, so yeah, so it was completely fine. Um, as you can see, I'm okay. Yeah, so yeah, in case that, that happens, that you end up in that situation, please do buy travel insurance, okay? Damn, I mean, it's not that expensive as well. It's not that expensive as well. And yeah, finally, um, in, just in case you want to buy something like an apple, an apple or some souvenirs um, in China, exchange your money. From your currency to the RMB, which is Chinese currency, or also known as the Chinese Yuan. Um, it, depending on the country, let's say the, the USD, the USD, the USD, the United States dollar, you can you can convert it to, to Chinese Yuan. And you need that Chinese Yuan, you obviously buy stuff. But only if you're planning to buy stuff in China, alright? <laughs> if you're not, then what are you doing? Why are you still saving money? You're saving money for no reason, it's wasting money the whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah. But only if you want to buy something, then yes, sure, exchange your money to um, RMB, which is Chinese Yuan, pretty much. And that brings it to the conclusion, really. Um, China, beautiful country to visit. But how can I have fun? You know, how can you enjoy the life in China, especially in winter, but the degree is so damn cold? Just enjoy it. <laughs> Go outside, explore, have fun. And my personal advice for anyone going to China in the winter, contact your local travel tour group. <laughs> contact your local travel agent. They will hook you up everything. They will tell you, bring up. Oh, this, this, do this, do that. 
they will handle everything. And um, also, um, even if you're not in China yet, or you haven't departed yet, or you're you know, getting out of China, keep constant communication with your travel agent. It can be on social media, so I feel like my case is use WeChat um, to keep constant, to keep constant communication. And from there, we knew what time to wake up, eat breakfast, and the final time. Time. Um, one perfect example I can give is what I like to call the 6 7 8 sequence 6 a.m. you're up, 7 a.m. breakfast, 8 a.m. you're out. All within an hour. You're all within an hour. So you basically get. For six a.m., you basically get two hour <coughs> uh, rest, aka okay, to get ready and stuff, and then you're out. <laughs> but it also really depends if some people, most people, are say that it will be a seven, eight, nine, and stay by an hour. Um, yeah, and also you change your hotels each day, your flight time. Your travel agent can keep on top of that for you. So I hope that clears some stuff up. Uh, if you are going to China during winter, um, from you know visas, flight trains, passport, the clothing, data, medication, slippers, power bank, charge, adapter, lotion, travel insurance, save your money. Do you can see this lot of stuff to do? My advice, and my top advice, plan in advance, advance in months, and then um, uh, what? Plan in advance. Yeah, plan in advance and also keep constant communication with your travel agent. Go with the tour group, either whether it's public or private, go with them, they know what to do. If, and if you have any questions in regards to me traveling around the world, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I will be reading every single one as I do. Because I love you guys, I love you my fans. Now, I do highly apologize for the lack of views. Okay, I'm resting up. Um, I haven't fully covered 100% yet. I am getting there. But videos, uh, video frequency will return soon, alright? So, wherever you are in the world, safe travels. And let's see, let's see what happens next. Let's see where I'm going next, eh? My name is Jack. And wherever you are in the world, safe travels.